But I wrote it, so we should say it. Um, today, I'm going to invite you to join this church. What? Many of you have already joined this church. Check the box, move on, right? Next thing. Today, I'm going to invite you, the you that's here with us right now, the you that walked in that door this morning, the, walk, the you that walked in that door to this church, this church that opened its doors to you this morning. Because I hold that every time you walk through those doors, it's a different you. It may only be slightly different, but it's different you. Maybe you cut your finger this week and you have a little band-aid on your finger. Maybe you got a boo-boo. Anybody got a boo-boo? Maybe that's the only difference between the, the you that walked through the door this week and the you that walked through the door last week. Sure, you're a week wiser, right? But all weeks aren't the same. Some weeks, real excitement can come from watching the prices right and guessing how much the milk duds cost. Woo! That is to say, not very exciting at all or maybe just a Band-Aid on your finger. Some weeks are full of joy. The week your child spells her name for the first time or gets married or the week you get a new job or the week you get a new girlfriend or boyfriend or the week you learn how to ski or the week you learn that skiing really isn't gonna be your thing. <laughs> Other weeks are full of wounds like the week a loved one dies, or the week you lose a job, or the electricity gets turned off, or you don't have enough money to buy gas to go to work. Some weeks are like that, but most aren't. Most weeks are the price is right and heaps, they're not really heaps of cloud or heaps of pain or joy, they're just milk duds and band-aids. But that week, Every week, when you walk through that door, you're a new you. You're new to you, and you're new to us. And the church is the same way. The church swirls like leaves in one of those little teeny tiny tornadoes that can pop up on the front lawn or in the driveway and spin the leaves around. Something happened to you this week, even if it was just a Band-Aid. Multiply that times 100, and that's what happened to this church. Multiply it times 200. Multiply it times 300. And that's what happened here in this church this week. The place that loved you as you walked into its new life, the place that by your mere act of showing up today is grateful and different than it was before you came here today. One of our hymn writers in Unitarian Universalism is a guy named Rick Mastin, who just recently died four or five years ago, but a wonderful poet. He's, um, his Wikipedia page says he is a stand-up poet, which right there is something you gotta pay attention to. Rick Mastin says, this is a dance we do. This is a dance, as my friend Liz James puts it, dancing sometimes we stick right together and hold ourselves tight, and sometimes we fling ourselves apart, held together only by mere fingertips. And sometimes that's even on purpose and intentional, just by a fingertip. If you dance like I do, you have no idea what's gonna happen next, <laughs> and you don't really care. And then there are those ballroom type, samba type, and even you who I love dearly but do not understand, line dancing types. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> and there are the line dancers. Uh, you know what's gonna happen next, or at least you know what should happen next, right? Because there's always someone like me in the line dance going the wrong way and everybody's mad at you. Um, 
In her book, A Gift from the Sea, author Anne Morrow Lindbergh writes this. She says, a good relationship has a pattern like a dance, and it's built on some of the same rules. You see, dancers know that they are moving to the same rhythm, creating a pattern and being invisibly nourished by the pattern and by the rhythm. The joy of the pattern is not the only joy of creation or the joy of participation. It is also the joy of living in that moment. In a church or in life, those moments are not always joyful. And yet we are here together, moving toward and away from each other, careful not to bump into people, or if you're like me, possibly bumping into people on purpose just to see what happens. We are here together in this space at this time, occupying this space alone and together simultaneously. And it is in this space that I want to be just more, I want to be more than just a tenant. When you start to dance, remember that it's the spinning and the stepping back that make it dancing. It's the coming apart and the coming back together. We in this church, you, the members of this church, we, we mark when you become a member of this church. We write it down in a book. But we don't mark that moment when you realize that this isn't what I signed up for. It's not what I thought it was going to be like. And these people here at this church, they're as imperfect as I am. It's what we create together, the imperfection, imperfection of what we create together and then you go on to leave and sometimes you turn back and decide to try again to try some new steps to keep turning and coming back and fitting together in new ways today we're going to do a very made up very informal service to mark a moment in our churches when we recommit to the church we do this in marriages, right? We'll re-say our wedding vows. But when we re-say our wedding vows, we are not saying, we are not saying that we would do it again with the same person that we did it with 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. We're saying we would do it now as I am with this person who's here, right here with me. It is a recommitment, not to the 20-year-old me or the 25-year-old me, but to the 50-year-old me or the 50-year-old uh, partner. So I wish we had these formal ceremonies to mark these moments in our churches and in our marriages, our best friends and our neighbors. Have you ever done a recommitment ceremony to your best friend? Why not? Our neighborhoods and our social justice projects. That moment of, I recommit, but not unconditionally. I'm coming back to you, but not to the dance we've been doing. We need a new step. Something's a little different. Remember that twirl we used to do? I can't do that anymore. <laughs> and if you're like me, you probably never could do it. But you tried. I want to be more than a tenant on this land. I want to be more than a conqueror. I want to be more than a proud citizen or a disillusioned one. I want to be part of a build and rebuild and broken and rebuilt and patched and rebuilt and smashed and rebuilt. A dance partner. If there was a ceremony to mark re-citizening, re some of us would not be ready. We have only just started. As my friend Liz James from Saskatoon says, it's easier to apologize than it is to listen. Apologies can have a way of ending conversations. But it's a step. It's one more step toward each other in warm embrace, spinning away from each other, caught only by fingertips, swirling around like leaves in one of those little teeny tiny tornadoes, grateful to be together grateful to be here, who you are, where you are, with who you are, right here, right now.